Imagine traversing the globe, sharing your experiences with thousands of followers. This is the life of Alexandra Saper, a travel influencer. Alexandra's wanderlust has taken her to the farthest corners of the world, her stories captivating her ardent followers. They are drawn to her tales of exploration, her vivid descriptions of places they've only dreamed of visiting. But with such a vast audience, Alexandra has also had to deal with the darker side of internet fame. Trolls and unwanted attention are part of her everyday reality. In 2022, she received a particularly unsettling message from an unknown man on Instagram. A message that would make anyone's skin crawl. But Alexandra, ever the professional, did what she usually does in such situations. She blocked the sender, deleted the message, and continued with her day. Little did Alexandra know, this was just the beginning of a horrifying ordeal. The Instagram troll was relentless, finding ways to reach Alexandra even after being blocked. This wasn't just another troll, this wasn't just another creepy message, this was something far more sinister, and it was escalating fast. The man began directing his messages to Alexandra's work email, a place she couldn't just block and delete him from. His messages were erratic at first, like a tempest of uncontrolled thoughts and emotions. Some were rambling sentences or paragraphs, others were more like rants, each one laced with an unnerving obsession with Alexandra. As time passed, the messages took on a darker tone. They became sexually explicit, aggressive, and increasingly threatening. It was as if the man was spiraling further into his obsession, losing any semblance of restraint. Despite her growing concern, Alexandra's reports to Google and Instagram fell on deaf ears. The messages kept coming, each one more disturbing than the last. The man she'd never met, never spoken to, was flooding her inbox with hundreds of messages that painted a chilling picture of his growing obsession. And then, the messages took a terrifying turn. The man began to speak of traveling to Bali to find Alexandra. He spoke of forcing her to be with him, of quitting his job to make this twisted fantasy a reality. His words were chilling. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you. If that included kidnapping, so be it. I'm quitting this traffic job tomorrow. I'm getting to that island as soon as I can, he wrote. You are never getting rid of me. His threats became increasingly graphic and violent. In one email he spoke of punishing Alexandra with sexual acts whether she liked it or not. And in another, he sent her a photo of a body stuffed inside a suitcase, threatening to do the same to her. As the threats intensified, Alexandra found herself in the crosshairs of a dangerous obsession. Desperate for help, Alexandra reached out to authorities, only to be met with indifference. She turned to tech giants Google and Instagram, reporting the harassing messages and hoping for a swift action. Yet, her pleas fell on deaf ears, her reports seemingly lost in the vast digital sea. The erratic, disturbing emails continued unabated, each one a chilling testament to the man's growing obsession. Undeterred, Alexandra reached out to the authorities, the people sworn to protect and serve. She contacted the Indonesian and UK police, explaining the situation in as much detail as she could. She detailed the man's threats, his plans to travel from London to Bali to find her, his unsettling fixation. Yet the response she received was far from the support she needed. Instead of understanding, she was met with dismissive comments. Calm down, they said, as if her fear was an overreaction. He's probably harmless, they reassured, as if they knew the man behind the emails better than she did. Her concerns were trivialized, her fear belittled. The seriousness of the situation was lost in a sea of sexist remarks and laughter, as male officers passed around screenshots of the threatening emails, chuckling at the absurdity of it all. She reached out to the UK and American embassies in Indonesia, hoping for assistance from her home country. Yet, the response was the same. Dismissed, ignored, redirected. No one seemed to understand the severity of the situation, the real and present danger she was in. Frustrated and terrified, Alexandra realized she was on her own. She was trapped in a nightmare, one where the man's threats echoed in her mind, his words a haunting reminder of the danger she faced. Alone in her fight, she was forced to confront a terrifying reality. The people she hoped would help were part of the problem. True to his word, 
the stalker traveled to Bali, bringing the terror closer to home. Like a nightmarish prophecy come true, the man who had been tormenting Alexandra from a distance was now on the same island, breathing the same air. His emails continued unabated, flooding Alexandra's inbox with his sinister fixation. His obsession was no longer confined to the digital world. This man, this stranger, was sending photos of Alexandra's neighborhood. A chilling realization dawned on her. He was here. He was looking for her. And so the world she had once known, the paradise she had called home, became a hunting ground. Fear, like a constant shadow, clung to Alexandra. She was forced to adapt, to take precautions. She adopted disguises when she stepped out of her house, a bid to blend into the crowd, to become invisible to the prying eyes of her stalker. But the fear of being recognized, of being found, was omnipresent. Worried that her home might be compromised, Alexandra checked into a hotel, a temporary sanctuary away from the prying eyes. But even the four walls of the hotel room weren't enough to quell her anxiety. The dread of the stalker discovering her location, of him knocking on her door, haunted her. Eventually, she sought refuge at a friend's house, hoping to find safety in numbers, a sense of security that had been snatched away from her. But even amidst friends, the fear was overwhelming, her peace of mind shattered. She was living on borrowed time in her own home, her own island. Alexandra's life, once filled with the joy of exploration and the thrill of new experiences, was now consumed by fear and anxiety. Her days were spent in hiding, her nights plagued by nightmares. She was a prisoner in her own life, her freedom curtailed by the presence of a man she had never met, a man who had turned her existence into a living nightmare. The stalker's presence in Bali turned Alexandra's life into a living nightmare. Faced with a lack of support from authorities, Alexandra decided to use her voice. This was not a decision made lightly, it was a decision born of desperation, of fear, and of the unwavering determination to protect herself. Alexandra took to the same platform that had initially connected her with this terrifying stalker, the internet. But this time, she was in control. She shared her story, detailing the explicit threats, the failed attempts to get help, the fear that had driven her to hide, and the chilling knowledge that her stalker was somewhere in her city, looking for her. She created a video, a raw and unfiltered account of her experience, and posted it online. She spoke of the man's obsession, his threats of violence, his journey from London to Bali to find her. She exposed the dismissive responses from the authorities, the countless emails ignored, the feeling of being alone in her fight. And she made it clear, she was not the only one. She was one of many, too many, who had been stalked, who had been threatened, who had been ignored. She was one voice, standing up against the silence that often surrounds such terrifying experiences. And then, something incredible happened. The video went viral. It spread across the globe, racking up more than 750,000 views. It was liked, shared and commented on by tens of thousands of people. People who saw her story, who heard her voice, who stood with her in solidarity. But perhaps the most powerful response came from the hundreds of victim survivors from around the world who reached out to Alexandra. They shared their own stories of being stalked, of feeling helpless, of being ignored. They thanked her for her bravery, for breaking the silence, for giving them a voice. In the face of horror, Alexandra became a beacon of strength and resilience. She didn't just break her silence, she shattered it. And in doing so, she sparked a global conversation about the terrifying reality of stalking and the urgent need for change. Alexandra's story is a chilling reminder of the dangers lurking behind the glamour of influencer life. This brave woman faced an unimaginable ordeal, a relentless stalker who invaded her life with threats, fear, and an obsession that knew no bounds. Yet when she sought help, she was met with indifference, dismissiveness, and even mockery. Her story brings to light a larger issue, the lack of proper support and action from authorities in cases of stalking. This is a grave problem that needs to be addressed urgently. Victims of such crimes should not be left to fend for themselves or be blamed for attracting unwanted attention. 
we must stand in solidarity with individuals like Alexandra and push for change. We should demand better response from authorities, stronger laws, and more robust systems to handle such cases. In the end, Alexandra's story is not just about a stalker, but about a system that failed to protect her.